Sparking Zero is here, and while it isn't a strictly competitive game, there are certainly a lot of things for most players to learn in a more in-depth light. Today, I will give you my top 10 tips I think new players should know. Hello everybody, Natsu Tanaka here, and yes, I've played a ton of this game and on my journey to 100%ing it, I just thought that the discourse online about the supremacists is really dumb, so I'm throwing my hat in the ring in order to try helping players that, like me, aren't super privy to the game's newer and returning mechanics. This is obviously all in an effort to get everyone on the same page so we can all learn just a little bit faster. Let's get into it. Number one, uh, this one's actually really, really important. It may not seem that way, but um, there are two control schemes for the game. You can also do some very slight altercations to your controller, but this one actually really does matter if you go in the settings for controls. There are two of them. You have the classic control scheme, which is basically a one-to-one -one for Budokai Tenkaichi 3, and then we have standard, which is a little bit of an upgrade in some ways. It's supposed to fit the more modern gaming control schemes that we've seen over the years, and it's just to help any players who are new to the franchise. Now, obviously, I'm not just telling you to make sure you know your control scheme. That one's very obvious, but there is something very interesting. So there are some settings in game that will change the impact clashes and how they can be played, but it isn't tied to the control scheme. However, what is is some of the different mechanics in the game. For example, grab is outright better on standard controls from my little bit of research that I've done. Um, for classic, you have to double tap X in quick succession while near an opponent. And either what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have that extra half second of you dashing in and then you'll get the grab. Or in some cases, you'll just keep dashing forward because it is a very repeatable action. On the other hand, I believe standard controls has it so that you can press L1 and square in order to just immediately grab no delay. So of course, choose whatever you're most comfortable with, but there is things to think about. Always make sure you check your control schemes. I think the game prefers standard mode, so this might help with the online bug. I don't know, don't quote me. Hey, it's me, Goku! Is that all you've got? Now, I know I'm just kind of running through all the basics, but oh my god, finish the tutorial. The tutorial is not at the start of the game. You have to seek it out. If you go to the World Tournament section, you will see training. Training is the tutorial. You need to spend the hour or two that it takes to go through all of those. It will teach you extremely important things, like changing the angle of your guard, Z-countering, ground grabs, vanishes, chase options, extensions. It is all very important. You're just a slave, a pawn with no free will of its own. Sorry, no dragons allowed. Now, speaking of extensions, please guys, use combo extensions. It will help so much, especially with CPUs, because typically they will not be able to use a Z counter, or if they do, um, tough luck, I don't know, man, you're screwed. But oh my god, I'm probably showing a clip right now. It does some huge damage and there are barely any downsides. The most someone could do is a revenge counter or a Z counter. And let me tell you, it is always just good. It has won me so many different fights just being able to land these extensions. And speaking of extensions, a little extra tip here. Make sure to use your chase option. For example, I don't know if it's called the dragon dash or the Z dragon dash. Whatever it is, the one where you spend a bar and double tap X while charging key, you will go behind your opponent. If you're using a vanish combo and you knock them away, you can actually use that to dash up behind them. And if you time it correctly, you can just start comboing all over again with your square combo. I heard your point addiction is strong. Let me fuck. Now, most people don't really know about the blast gauge. I think they changed the name of it in this game, but it's, it's that little blue bar that you have on the left side of your character. This is where all of the big defensive options in the game will come from. You can get revenge counter, which is possibly one of the most broken defense options in the game. It has crazy slowdown. It's almost instant. It's an easy input. If an opponent wants to counter it, they have to spend two bars of their own gauge, and the only thing they'll get is a possibility for a vanish combo and one bar of key. Now, speaking of really good counters, 
You can use skills with the Blast Gauge. Skills 1 and 2 are almost so incredibly useful on every single character. After Image Strike, Wild Sense, Full Power, Instant Transmission, Heals, Super Armor, Buffs in general. Oh my god, some of these some of these options have multiple. Like Bardock's Get Off Me tool, he has that explosive wave. And guess what? It gives him full sparking meter. It's crazy. You can enhance your guard counters in order to uh, stop charge attacks, I believe. It only takes one bar, and once again, you'll get another free vanish combo, pretty much. Last gauge is king, I'm telling you. You can vanish just about everything in this game. It is so incredibly important. The reason that all these skills do so much damage is because of the fact that if you are good enough, you will always vanish them. The fact that you can get out of basically any combo ever with the Z counter is actually so incredibly broken. I think all the high level players are going to learn this move specifically. It's forward square. You have to time it correctly. That's what the tutorial says. I don't exactly know what that means. From what I know, you can't hold forward and then just try pressing square. You have to do it on time, and it matters when you do it. I believe it's 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 like any other uh, game with like parries, where if you miss it, there's going to be a cooldown until your next one, so you can't just spam it. You have to time it correctly. So anyone who learns this, I think is going to be an absolute king of the game, unless they just suck at literally everything else. Once again, more defense. You need defense. 90% of this game's fighting is going to be defense. Sidestepping? People have no clue how broken sidestepping can be if they just slightly implement it into their playstyle. It can counter the Z Dragon dashes that I was talking about. It can counter blocks and stances. Well, I call it stance. Uh, it's, it's, it's actually called perception. You can get behind the opponent, and guess what? That reduces a lot of their defense options. It's just a good dodge in general. It has iframes. Forward step is the greatest example of this. It's so incredibly spammable. You'll see some CPUs just brick sometimes, and they'll just absolutely spam it infinitely. And if you can't hit them out of it, then guess what? They're just gonna keep doing it until you can finally get those few frames that they're actually open to damage. Now, of course, this can lead into an impact slash clash, whatever you want to call it. But 90% of the time, I'm telling you, people do not use these easy options. Backstep, you can easily get out of grabs, you can bait people, because if you didn't know, supers at close range will always make you backstep before inputting it. You can just get better spacing. I swear to god, I do not see enough of these movement options, they are so good for defense. And of course, if you don't already know, if you dodge out of a grab, what do you think that's gonna mean for your opponent? Do you think they're gonna recover immediately? No, this isn't a tech, right? You're not both at the same disadvantage if you tech that grab. Do not sleep on Sonic Sway. Sonic Sway is using perception uh, just as your opponent is about to hit you, and basically it'll execute this cool like dodge cutscene where your character stances up and just completely dodges all of your opponent's attacks while staying stationary. But the most important part is that one, it can counter basically all mashing playstyles, and two, it drains guaranteed a full keybar every single time from your opponent. And then, oh, look at that, I have three bars of key, let's use a rush move. If they decide to guard, who do you think is winning this exchange? They're going to be guard broken, their key is going to be completely depleted, they'll be put into that animation of fully trying to recover that one bar of key by mashing as fast as possible, and guess what, that is just free time for you to get as much damage as possible. Now, I did mention this one already very briefly, but the instant slash cutscene supers are not undodgeable. When I started playing the game, I thought that these moves were completely uncounterable, because what happens when your opponent dashes in and you're just gonna be in a cutscene move? Chances are, they're not getting out of it. But if you are patient and you are not pressing buttons, 
While an opponent uses any one of these cutscene moves, you can simply hold circle in the middle of it. And guess what? 10 out of 10 times, as long as you are following these rules, you will vanish out of it. You have to be in a specific range or else you have too much time outside of the cutscene to consider this a successful vanish. It'll turn into a block. There are a lot of unblockables in the game. You'll get hit and punished. But this is basically the easiest and most consistent way to dodge these seemingly undodgeables rather than reacting to them. Because obviously it's so much easier when you're not incredibly close up. <laughs> this is going to be so cool. Ugh. People have not been talking about how broken transformations are. You're mostly going to see this when you're in DP battles or if you like selecting base forms of characters. But some transformations will completely fill up your key bar. It is so good. You have little to no downtime after the transformation. You can quickly transform after knockaways, and guess what? That'll even combo into supers. Some transformations can straight up heal, some transformations give super armor, and oh my god, I don't see people abusing this enough. Hey, Cell! Number 10, people might think this one's a cop-out, but don't let the opponents get to you. This is unironically really important. If you see consistency, you can adapt, you can overcome. If your opponent makes predictable moves, that means you can counter them, you can box them up, and they are done for. Panicking can be, and probably is, very obvious to your opponents and will only serve to impair you. I have seen a lot of opponents panicking in my time. I have panicked a lot in the time playing this game. It is never a good thing to do. Obviously, you can regain your confidence and steady yourself, but the trick is never let it happen and you'll always be playing your best. Now, obviously, some people are going to be mad at that one. Um, yeah, it is a little bit of a cop-out, but just to show that I did have 10 in mind, standing still while locked off helps you lock on faster. Yes, lock on is a mechanic in this game. Yes, it is very annoying. Yes, it's worse than Tenkaichi 3 but it is not impossible to learn or even to use to your advantage. Standing still while locked off will always help you lock on faster. I found this out the hard way. Um, moving around, if your opponent is even in front of you, sometimes it will not lock on. You need to stand still sometimes. I haven't tested any of the scouter characters, but in BT3, um, they would be able to find people faster just because of the fact that they have scouters. So all the people with key sensing would be slower until the scouter people take battle damage and then suddenly their scouter would have the chance to completely break and they would no longer have it to sense their opponent which would make it a lot harder for these characters to sense their opponents after ultimates and such i don't know if this carries into sparking zero but it is helpful to mention and at least be brought to people's attention but yeah with that being said that is all 10 slash 11 tips that I have for new players. Hopefully we can all learn these things easily. Hopefully I won't get trashed on by supremacists that think all these tips are actually just completely unhelpful. Anyway, I don't want to get into that right now. But yeah, thanks everybody so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, follow me on Twitch. I'm going to have my 100% review out very soon. And with that being said, lots of love to all of you. And of course, have a day.